These Intralox technicians are assembling thermodrive belting using proprietary splicing technology developed at our facilities in New Orleans, Louisiana. That same technology is the basis for thermodrive splicing systems developed for use in customer plants. This unit allows setup on a carryway or returnway, even in areas where space is tight. Splicing can take less than four minutes and less than 12 minutes total from setup to pack up. So our customers can splice belts between production runs with the same perfectly aligned, hygienic, factory quality results every time. Splicing your thermodrive belts is a relatively simple process. Plant personnel can become proficient in less than 30 minutes of training. Thermodrive splicers are available in 24 inch and 42 inch widths to allow splicing in a wide variety of applications. There are two major components of the splicing system. The first is the clamping fixture with its top clamps, which also serve as cut guides, and its groove decks. The belt drive bars engage precisely with the groove decks to ensure accurate alignment of the belt ends during cutting and splicing. The second major component is the heat wand assembly with its connecting cables and control box. The heat wand melts the two belt ends, creating the splice. The wand stand holds the heat wand safely when not in use. A number of accessories are also included. Particularly important are the belt skiver and trimmer used for removing the beads and edge flash after splicing, a self-retracting safety knife, and the Thermodrive belt pitch gauge used to verify splice accuracy. Be sure to gather cut resistant and heat resistant gloves before using the splicer. You may want a few other supplies as well. All of the system components are housed in a custom fitted storage case. An instruction manual arrives with each system. Refer to it before using the splicer for setup and operation details, along with important safety information. As we review splicing procedures, you will see this symbol appear when you should reference the manual for more information, and this symbol when you should take safety precautions. There are five basic steps to making good thermodrive belt splices. Bring the splicing system and suggested shop supplies to a suitable location for splicing at the conveyor. Connect the heat wand and the temperature control box. This end of the heat wand cord has a distinctive feature on the bottom. Align it with the groove on the control box and make the connection. Connect the other end of the heat wand cord to the heat wand. Then latch each connection firmly in place. Never force the electrical connections. Next, plug the temperature control box cord into your power source. The splicer is available in two voltage ranges. Turn the control box power switch on and adjust the set point for the belt material you are splicing. Refer to the manual for the correct set point for your belt. In this case, we are getting ready to splice polyurethane, which requires a set point of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The green numbers show the set point, the red number shows the current temperature. Prepare the two belt ends for splicing as the heat wand comes up to temperature. To achieve a better splice, it is very important that the belt ends are completely degreased, cleaned of all product residues, and wiped dry, top and bottom surfaces and edges. Back to the clamping fixture. The clamping fixture ships with the handle unattached. If you haven't already done so, attach and secure the handle now. Be sure the cable and fastener face outward. Now loosen both pivoting thumb knobs on the top clamp cut guides and remove them from the groove decks. Notice that since we are splicing a 50 millimeter pitch belt in this demonstration, we are using the red 8050 cut guide. The blue 8026 cut guide is used when splicing 26 millimeter pitch belts. Pull one belt in across both groove decks until at least one inch of the belt is past the second groove deck. Engage the belt drive bars in the corresponding grooves on the groove deck so that the belt is perfectly flush. Hold the belt in position and place the cut guide over the belt so that the stainless steel cut guide edge faces outward. Tighten the two thumb knobs simultaneously. 
With the cut guide in place and a cut resistant glove on your non-cutting hand, hold your utility knife vertically against the cut guide. Make one scoring cut followed by several shallow straight cuts across the width of the belt. Now one belt end is prepared and what has been cut off is waste. Loosen both thumb knobs. Remove the cut guide and rotate it 180 degrees so it is in position to prepare the next belt end. Remove the prepared belt end carefully, remembering to keep both surfaces and edges clean. Pull the second belt end across both groove decks, position it, and secure it with the cut guide edge facing outward, just as you did for the first cut, and follow the same cutting procedure. A diagonal cut will cause a faulty splice, so carefully inspect the belt end cut for straightness and 90 degree corners using a square edge. Secure the belt end under the top clamp cut guide. After securing one end, use the handle to open the clamping fixture. Pull the other belt end in toward the clamping fixture center, being certain the belt drive bars are engaged in the corresponding grooves. Now, lightly secure this belt end with the top clamp and thumb knobs. Notice that both cut guide edges are facing outward. Our belt is now nearly ready for splicing, but first we must precisely align the prepared ends with each other, horizontally and vertically. Turning the handle back and forth gently brings the two belt ends together for a quick visual check. These edges are not aligned yet. With the clamping fixture open, loosen the thumb knobs on one belt end. Reposition the belt until the belt edges are aligned horizontally. Check the parallel and perpendicular alignment of the belt end again before firmly and evenly tightening the knobs once more. With thumb knobs tightened, bring the belt ends together without rocking to inspect vertical alignment. If necessary, adjust the thumb knobs up and down simultaneously to align the belt ends vertically. When the belt ends and edges are aligned horizontally and vertically, turn the crank handle to fully open the groove decks. With the groove decks open, lightly tug on the edge of each clamped belt to ensure they are secure. With belt ends secure, we are now ready to splice the belt ends. We can begin when the heat wand temperature stabilizes at the set point for at least one minute. Using a heat resistant glove and a clean, dry cloth, wipe off any residue from the heat wand. Place the heat wand between the two groove decks. Position the heat wand cable to the opposite side of the crank handle and turn the crank handle until the belt ends touch the heat wand. You'll hear the click. Begin timing immediately, but hold the crank handle to maintain light contact between the belt ends and the heat wand for 45 seconds. When the melt time has elapsed, open the groove decks and remove the heat wand. While still holding the wand, turn the crank handle to gently close the groove decks within five seconds. You'll hear that click again. Closing the groove decks quickly but without force brings the two heated belt ends together and is essential to forming a good splice. Remove the clamping fixture handle. We'll let the unit stay in the closed position and let it cool down for two minutes. In the meantime, wipe off the heat wand again and place it in the stand. After two minutes, remove the top clamps so we can trim the bead from the splice belt before it cools completely. This is important. It makes it easier to remove the bead, creating a smooth belt surface and ensuring the integrity of the splice. Slide the belt over so the bead is positioned directly over the stainless steel cutting strip on the deck and secure the belt in place with one top clamp. Place the skiver blade under the edge of the bead and make a few side-to-side -side motions to get started. Make certain the curved edge of the skiver tool is flush against the belt surface and be sure you are wearing a cut-resistant glove on your non-cutting hand. Then, carefully trim across the width of the belt completely removing the bead. To remove the bead from the underside of the belt, use trimmers to separate the bead from the belt surface. Then, use the skiver to remove the bead from the underside of the belt. Hold the trimmers vertically to remove the flash from each edge of the belt. If needed, use trimmers to smooth rough or offset edges. 
Ensure every plastic particle is collected and properly discarded to avoid product contamination. Then visually inspect upper and lower surfaces of the belt, looking for cracks, bubbles, or pits. The top and bottom of the belt should be smooth and flat at the splice without waves, bends, or offsets. Use the belt pitch gauge to ensure correct belt pitch before placing the spliced belt into production. If the splice is not acceptable, you must cut out the splice and repeat the process. When packing up, secure the top clamps on the clamping fixture. Be sure that the heat wand is cool and the wand cord is disconnected before returning them to the storage case. Be sure to remember the manual and the accessories. To find out more about the Thermadrive splicing system or other joining methods, contact your Intralox customer service representative.